kind of feel like I'm cheating a little bit on my Billy bars. Now I do love them. They work really well with almost any tonneau cover. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of work to them to make them work, but they work really well for most of the tonneau covers out there and there's a lot of the trifolds. But I have these Diamondback covers. I've had them for a while now, absolutely love them. And they're all about security, being sealed nice and tight. And the Billy bars just doesn't work great with them because of how you can't space them out as much to fit a rooftop tent or kayaks or bikes a little bit better and how I kind of want them to look. So I found something from Front Runner that's designed for the Diamondback covers that is gonna make my job much easier, especially for loading and unloading the rooftop tent when I use it. Because the other thing about Billy Bars is this is the gap you have available. And normally that's fine if the tonneau cover is like this. The dime bag is like this. You can kind of tell. It is thick. So the new one is gonna go on top. Let me show you what I found. Now what's in this box is a rack system by Front Runner and it's called the Front Runner Diamondback Rack System. So it's designed specifically for the Diamondback has nice little packaging here. Open me up, you'll be one step closer to adventure. Open it up and kind of see, I haven't really messed with anything in here yet. Just open it to make sure everything was in here. For the most part, has a whole bunch of different parts to it right here. Rubber gaskets, instructions, the new legs for the rack. Here's one of the crossbars here. And you can see this is gonna be much thinner than a Billy bar and also do ha does remain having that T-slot design for the whole system. And this is gonna be great because it's on a railed system that goes the length of the Diamondback on each side. And that's gonna allow you to place these wherever you want. And I only got the two bar system, but they do recommend the three bar if you wanna have a larger tent. But I wanted to go the two bar. A lot of folks are, you just run the two bar, works fine. Just kind of do that weight distribution there. So let's tear open this, take out the pieces. Let's talk about this install. Oh wow, the whole reason we get stuff. Look, stickers. Now I have heard the instructions are pretty terrible actually from Front Runner. I don't know why you'd think they'd take some more thought into this, but I did buy this rack. I mean, they're not, not a, like terrible. Nothing about the actual bars. Well, that's what I'm here for. Let's figure this out together. Let's talk about what you get in the box here. Two crossbars, T-slots, nice flat, thinner than the Billy Bars, which is good. Gets me a lot more room to work. Stickers, always the most important. Four longer T-slot rails. Some stickers on the back to help place them. So these four go on the four, basically, corners and sides of the Diamondback cover. Two smaller T-slot rails go on the little small wedge in between the two, the front and the back Diamondback cover. Four feet, four feet attachments, four front runner plate covers that go with this setup right here. Hardware, hardware, end caps for each of the rails. Weather stripping, to go underneath the rails, and we're also gonna use some black silicone that came with the Diamondback. And there's also some covers for the ends here that uh, I, I don't know where they are, Well, but we will find them, because there's definitely some covers that are supposed to be on the end of here. So we'll see how that works out. Things you'll need to complete this job, instructions, we'll run through those. I did see these cards in all the different packaging, which is neat, just kind of like how my name is and who inspected the parts, which is nice. I did grab my Fix-It sticks. If you haven't seen these before, these are awesome. Very, very high quality for bits here. I believe we have a 316 and a 532nd is what you'll need. Some blue tape to help mark off your area, protect the Diamondback metal. Tape measure. They don't require this, but I think I'm gonna drop a little bit of this leftover Diamondback cover black silicone that came with a cover in each of the holes to help a little bit with some waterproofing. Drill, relatively small Phillips head marker, scissors. This right here is to drill. I think the best size, these are all, they're all in millimeters. So I'm gonna go and use a 3 16th right there and a 10 millimeter socket, a deep socket actually, and one helper. Hi Colton. Hi. <laughs> Let's knock this out. Step one, 
take one of the tracks, and you can be doing this for all six tracks, remove the plastic on the sticky parts here. Now that you have the sticky side exposed, take your weather stripping, which comes with this nice long spool here, and you're gonna see that it actually goes on each side here, and it sticks on like so, and just run it all the way down. When you reach the end, take a pair of scissors, and you're gonna cut just on the end here, Next we have these end caps. There are eight of them and they slide right in. Colton's going to demonstrate how that works. So they slide in and then there's a hole. So you want to drop that screw in there. Mm -hmm. And then we'll grab the drill and drill just a little screw. Yeah, just a little self-tapping screw. And then there's one over here, right? You want to drop that one in? So assemble the end caps and there's two per each of the four longer rails. You got it, you think? A little tight. Some fitment required. Get the hammer. No, that's not bad. There you go. Get the other screw. You wanna drop it in? I'll get the drill. Up next, what do we got? Center the rails. Center the rails. All right, so we're gonna need tape measure. We're gonna want our blue tape for this one. And then you also have a marker somewhere, right? There it is. So a silver marker should show up nicely, or a silver sharpie should show up nicely on this Diamondback. But you want to center these on each section, all right, including the small ones here. You want to center them perfectly. And then you want to go, take your tape measure, you want to open that up for me. And you want to measure from right here, if you wouldn't mind putting the point right there, bud. You want to take the point right here and go in two and a half inches from the edge of this rubber gasket here, okay? So two and a half inches all the way down, centered on point, and then mark all the holes with the Sharpie, and then go and you can take your tape if you'd like and tape all the way down and mark again where the holes are on top of the tape, or you can actually kind of see through, honestly, with how this tape is. And then you have a nice clean, surface to start drilling all your holes and that way the tape kind of helps protect the rest of the diamondback finish. Make sure you vacuum up all this metal out of here. And the tape catches a lot of this metal stuff. Oh, a little bit more bud. Yeah, a little more right here. Let's see, it lines up. It's gonna line up perfectly. Also, I did have to punch a hole through a couple of these. I tried my best. Two and a half inches in general seems to clear pretty well. First hole's right here. Plenty of room for that bolt there. Second hole is under here. That is unfortunate, but there's no way to get in there. So I tried, but I did get one, two, and three. Let's close her up, keep moving. <laughs> Dynamic is pretty nice. It's the next morning. We already drilled everything yesterday. A little bit chilly today. Okay. It's the next morning. We already drilled all of the holes we needed yesterday. But I wanted to show you, these right here are anchors and you can tell there's not enough for every hole. Now what these are for is any holes that are inaccessible from the bottom. So if you hit, for example, a screw, like one, two, three, four and five and you can't access the bottom of the hole here then you have this anchor that you can widen this hole up and go straight in and put the anchor in there and still get a screw in now i made this hole slightly smaller anyways for those bolts so if there's another spot like maybe in the front there that i showed you earlier that has an issue where it's hitting right where a bar is where you can't even get a bolt or the anchor in then you can probably just get the screw in and that should help hold it as long as you get at least that four out of five to help hold it down. So let me widen up this hole and show you how those anchors work. So this is the part where I was like, oh, the instructions, you know, maybe they're not that bad. Well, <laughs> this wrench is a wrench that's designed to hold the anchor in place and hold it down while you tighten it up and it flattens out that little prong pieces there 
to kind of flatten out nice and tight to the aluminum of the cover. Well, that wrench is not currently in my kit. <laughs> oh, whatever. So I'll find this hole here. Where'd it go? Right there. I'm gonna take a step bit right here. Let's see how this works. Test fit, you gotta at least get that bottom in there and then you can push the rest of these flat pieces in. One more probably. Maybe one more. That should do it. So now you can go and get a hammer, get that in there. Let's clean this up first. If your kit doesn't come with a wrench either, Fear not, I think we can knock this out with some vice grips. Drop the screw in. Start it off, hold this steady. Make sure it's nice and tight. And that's it, so now, and take, reverse this out. You don't want to go too tight on that. That worked out really well. Check that out. So that is a way to go around if you can't access underneath. So do that for the rest of them you can't access. Let's bolt this thing down. Now for each of these holes, you're gonna to want to put a drop of silicone in there. This is just some leftover black silicone from the diamond back itself. So drop some here. I'd actually put some around this ring. It's all gonna be covered up. And these are permanent rails, by the way. Obviously you can tell by the fact we're drilling into this. <laughs> the rails can stay on, the crossbars are can, the things you can remove. This is where that 10 millimeter socket's gonna come in handy. But basically rest your rail on top Preferably before that silicone dries, it's gonna have a little extra seal to squish down. You wanna line your holes up. Take five of your bolts right here. Same one you just used to fix that anchor point in. And you're just going to find the hole here. Mine are actually a little bit small, which I did on purpose, because you can actually use that to your advantage by threading this through. If you just had to go and thread this through. Push that through there, there you go. Might get stuck by that rubber weatherproofing there. But yeah, get a couple of these going. Pretty simple. Each one of these, except for, of course, the one you installed the anchor for, takes a washer and then a 10 millimeter bolt with that nylon lock in there. So you do that for as many as you can, in this case, the four, and tighten it down. So this last one here, or really the first one, is a little bit too close to this bar, um, which is, you know, unfortunate, but I think with how small that hole is and the fact that it's rubbed up right against this piece here, you really don't need much. Like it is not budging. <laughs> and of course you have the anchor and then you just crank these three down and you should be golden. And they should look like this when you're done. And now just use the rest of these and run the bolts through over the hole, get the other rails on. Now we get to the front. In my circumstance, you have one, two, three, and then this happened to lie just on the inside of here, so you can't get an anchor in there. However, you can get a bolt in there and it'll ride on the inside edge. Should hold just fine. And then on this side, you get a bolt through there too. So that worked out. I find getting them just started and then slowly just going back and forth, kind of evenly getting them torqued down really helps make sure that this goes nice and flat and seals up. So far, so good. Rails are done, nice and straight. That by far 
and takes the longest time. I think just measuring, carefully drilling, making sure this works out nice. So let's dive into these crossbars and get these on next. Hopefully that doesn't take nearly as long. This is the fun part. You ready? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> there is no mention of the crossbars and this is the only instructions you get all right let's figure this out now i have the two bar system so they came with four of these t-slot mounts all we're going to do is remove one end cap on each of the rails get this little screw out of there and slide this in and see how that's going to work and that's going to attach to one bar i'm going to do one far back because i have a larger tent and then one kind of in the middle on the other rack probably and then just put your end cap back on and do this three more times on each section where you want your crossbars now you can see compared to the billy bars this is so much more flexible because the billy bars have to ride inside on the rails where up top here you can take off your crossbars whenever you want and even leave these t-slots in or take them out leave just the rails on and slide these back and forth depending on where you want to put them now is a good time to also test out that all of your screws are down nice and tight so i did hit one on the other side just have to crank it down a little bit more make sure they're flush now these four are your footers. They're gonna go on like that. You're gonna take another washer and another 10 millimeter nut and do that right there. And you can kind of see how they're pretty adjustable. And of course now is the time to measure out depending on what size tent you have, where you want these footers to go before tightening them down. So if you wanna go further back, Go further forward, depending on what you have, run them back if you want to have kayaks or whatever. So measure out and then just tighten these down. And of course you do have some a little bit of wiggle room there, back and forth, depending on where you want the rails to go. I'm gonna go right in the middle and see how that looks. And probably like, I don't know, maybe like 10 inches back from the, the end cap, or maybe just measure it from the, the end of the rail here. Alright, nice and snug. About eight inches back from the edge of the rail and this one i'm going 11 inches back from the end near the cab there now you're going to take your larger button head bolts here put a crush washer on there and then a washer so set them up just like so you'll also need your cover plate it's going to go right in here it's going to look real nice so it's not just a logo cover plate it actually is a functional bolt cover plate and then take your footer, your support bracket here, and an actual bracket arm here. You're going to slide it in like so, run these bolts through the back, and then you have this plate cover here that you can go and just screw together, and it looks really clean. It's actually pretty smart on front runner. Now it'd be nice if they include instructions on all this, but I'm glad I can figure this out. <laughs> but yeah, we're just gonna try to screw this in, get your drill, get this snug down nice. And you see how easy this is to remove too. A couple of bolts, you can leave the footers on if you want. Uh, obviously you can just leave the racks on the whole time, whatever you wanna do, but it's a little bit easier to take off the rails if you need to do take off the whole body for truck stuff, or you can just go and lift up the Diamondback and take off each panel and uninstall the Diamondback to do more truck stuff and just leave the rails on there. So tighten these down, do the other three, and then we'll do the top. It's really sturdy. I like that. Looks good, very clean. It's time for our rails that go across. Now time for the crossbars. You have two sides here. Again, no instructions, but there's a bolt here on the end in this T-slot. So we're going to go and take the idea that the bolt is on the bottom. Also, there's a cover that's supposed to come with this and the covers, the four of them are not included. So I'm going to have to reach out to front runner on that one. I don't get what's going on there, but <laughs> essentially what we're going to do is these bolts here are 13 millimeter. They drop in here and they're going to glide into this channel like so and line up with the holes on top of 
the brackets, all right? So the support brackets here. So you're just gonna line them up where you want, the washer and the nut go on the bottom and you crank them down with a 13 millimeter and you have little covers here that are kind of nice at least to cover those up. So do those on each side. Let's get them tightened down. And these are light aluminum crossbars. You can kind of see, you can slide them back and forth. I'll probably measure off from this curve, like the inside edge here to the end and just make sure they're perfectly balanced and centered. And then these aren't gonna go anywhere because they're in their T. And once these are cranked down, everything's centered how you like it, you can install these little covers on here which seem to be pretty tight and they look good. Now one of the best features about these crossbars and how they work with this particular cover, being the Diamondback cover, is the fact you can open up the cover and then close it with the rack, with the whole system still on. Now, of course, if you put a rooftop tent like I'm planning to put on there, you can't do that, but that won't be on there all the time. And this is just a much more simpler solution, I think, than the Billy Bars for this particular cover. So I will say the install took a good couple hours, almost three hours, honestly, to install. And it's because of how much measuring you have to do, a lot of drilling, a lot of just making sure you do it right. Do it right the first time. You don't want to mess up because if you're drilling into something like this, it's, a, it's an investment, you don't want to mess it up. So measure several times, drill once, right? So I think it's definitely more of a strenuous activity. So it's something where if you aren't very comfortable with figuring things out, especially with a missing tool, with maybe some missing parts, and you don't really want to bother with it, take it somewhere to get installed for sure. But overall, I am very happy with it so far. I'm excited to get the tent on there, go camping. And I just like some of the little things like the front runner cover plates where the bolts go in. I do want the end, end caps here. These are just little push in end caps for the rails to kind of protect the T slots. So just get them started. Might be a little tight. There you go. Get a mallet hammer in there. But that's a good thing because that way, you know, these aren't going to just pop out, but definitely adds to the looks and helps protect getting a bunch of junk in here. Well, thanks so much for watching, guys. If you have any questions about the install, definitely hit them down in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. And uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next review.